Hey guys, today we're building a cabin out of pilot wrap. I think what's especially neat about these plastic wrap cabins is how they refract light. You just get like one little flashlight and uh, you shine it at the ceiling and it kind of lights up the whole area. It's kind of like a just it magnifies the light. What you doing there, Don? I'm delimbing the trees so that uh, we don't poke through through the, uh, the, the plastic wrap, of course. Or poke our eyes out. Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back. Spring has finally sprung, and it's time for a new project. Now, today, my plan is to make an emergency shelter real-time using basic hand tools and pallet wrap. I know you guys love the pallet wrap. You guys are on your keyboards right now using more plastic than we're going to use to build an entire shelter to house how many people? 10. 10. At least 10 people? In 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. So how is 10 people 10 minutes using plastic? Plastic wrap. We've got our little our location set out here. It's four trees in the forest. We're just going to do some little clearing here because we want a nice solid uh, surface. We don't want stuff poking our pallet wrap. So we've got Don. Don's here. You gonna wave? No? Oh, no, no wave. I'll wave. Sure. Yeah. There, there we go. Right. All right. We got Chris here. Chris is from the Wooded Beersman. He's, uh, he, he loves doing these kind of things. Look at the enthusiasm. That's how I'm you use, use that saw. I don't think I'm using the saw right. Okay. All right. So we're going to get this thing going because we've got literally 10 minutes to build this entire cabin that is going to sleep 10 people. So if you guys have noticed, we haven't started the clock yet. We had an agreement that we would actually get kind of situated first and then we'll build the thing in 10 minutes. So it doesn't include the prep work because I think that would be unfair as far as building a whole cabin that will house 10 people. That's a pretty tall challenge in 10 minutes. So you could picture this as being like an emergency situation. You got 10 people and you're going to fire this together. All right, going to introduce you the primary building material in this build is the pallet wrap. You guys may have seen this stuff wrapped on your Amazon packages that show up in the mail, or you might have seen skids wrapped in this stuff. They use this primarily for shipping purposes. You could pick this up at the big box office stores for packaging materials, or you can find it, uh, you know, if you go to your loading dock and uh, talk really nicely to the guy in the back, he might sell you a roll or give you a roll. Who knows? This thing's a really cool tool. They just sent this to me. It's a Woodsman Pal. It is a, I believe, it is a some sort of awesome machete looking. This thing means some business. It's got a wooden handle. It's got little Allen keys attached to the thing and it's got a really sharp edge. And I think this thing's for pulling branches off. It comes with a leather sheath. Let's give this thing a whirl. I've never used it before, but I want to hit something with it. Maybe I should put this around my wrist. Violet. Look at that. Now some of you guys may think I'm hurting the tree by knocking all its branches off. The truth of the matter is, is that the branches at the lower base of these trees are dead. And this here that we're sitting is a planted pine forest that has to be thinned out. And to make valuable timber, once you've knocked all the branches down below, they heal over creating less knots in your wood in your final product. So let's get chopping. So if you guys want to find your very own Woodsman Pal, the link will be in the description below for this awesome tool. All right, guys, we've got all our sticks pretty much cleaned up so they're not going to poke our plastic wrap. Now I'm going to explain what I'm going to exactly do. So I've got my team here. Chris, you ready? He doesn't ready. exactly know what we're doing yet. Neither does Don. I'm going to kind of run them by it as like I'm running you guys by this thing. So Chris, you're going to grab one pole on the one side. Don's going to grab the other pole on the other side. We're going to create sort of an X frame. I'm going to wrap it in the middle and then we're going to determine where our peak is. All right, so the plan is to take this pole here, Don, and we're going to set it up against this tree about head height because we want enough room at our edge. And then we're going to stick it up there. And Chris is going to grab this stick over here and he's going to place it slightly above his head. And then we're going to meet in the middle and we're going to attach that and that'll give us our angle for our roof. Might turn it on. Okay. All right, we're all on. We're gonna send Chris up the ladder. He's gonna set the fourth camera. We've got four cameras rolling right now to keep us true to the spirit of this competition, which is going to be a 10 minute build. Chris is up the ladder right now. You're gonna set it. Can you set it up? You hit the button. There's a camera up the tree. There's a camera on my head. There's a camera on Chris's chest. And Dawn is over there with no camera. Well, he feels watched, I'm sure. So that's the plan. So we're gonna get this build started. We're gonna start by 
adding our plastic wrap to our structure to hold it together and uh, put your wagers down below to see who's going, if we're gonna actually make it. Are we gonna be able to do this in 10 minutes? What do you think, Chris? <laughs> I don't think so. You don't think so? <laughs> All right, let's go. So the, there's, a, there's a timer. We're gonna put a timer down here somewhere. Anyways, pretty, I don't know, I don't edit these things. Down here somewhere. And uh, right, marks, get set. You ready? You ready? Ready? You ready? No. Nobody's ready. You have to sync the, ca sync the cameras up first. No, no, just one. Okay, cameras. <laughs> Three. Cameras are, no, just one clap. Oh. One clap syncs all the cameras and then I can get the audio synced up. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's do this. Supposed to explain while we're doing this. Okay, you're gonna hold this thing up here. I gotta uh, hold this. You're gonna hold that thing, Don. You're gonna go a little bit lower. Because we're gonna we're gonna lock in the middle middle pole down a little bit lower. We're gonna go down a little bit lower. Down a little lower. A knife. I'm just gonna rip it apart. I don't even need a knife. Okay, uh, that's perfect right there. Don's gonna go a little higher. Don a little higher. Chris a little higher. Don a little higher. Chris a little higher. Right there. Who feels the strongest? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What happened? Got the first A-frame up. It seems to be holding. That just has to hold a little bit because we're gonna put the ridge beam in there. It's gonna strengthen that a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, we're gonna start again, same thing with our, just like that. Just hang on for a second. I'm gonna wrap this away. I'm gonna do that tight when we pivot it up. Anybody hear what I'm saying? When you pivot that thing up, it'll tighten it. So Dawn, go. Dawn, you're gonna go up. Chris, you're gonna go up. Dawn's gonna go down. Dawn down. Step a little bit down. Chris down a bit. Chris down. Down. I don't know if I can get far enough back. I think. All right. Gotta be so loud, so soothing. Huh? What are you saying? <laughs> what am I saying? This isn't a stealth build. Yeah. 
stealth building in the forest with pallet rock. Come on. Okay. I got it. Okay. There we go. Okay. And the idea behind this guy is we're gonna we're gonna kind of lash this together like this. Kind of like making the pallet into strength. You gotta do out more outside, Chris. Okay, we're gonna go in the middle now. Yeah, we're gonna just... Can we just stay that? Can you grab me that right, roll? At this point in the build, we realized we weren't really going to make our 10 minute mark. It was kind of more like a 30 minute build. We It proved to be difficult to actually unroll the plastic. What was happening was it was getting a little bit frayed on the roll itself, and then proving to be difficult to, to unwrap it from the roll. Also, what we had problems with is the height of the building. If we were to made it a little bit shorter, we wouldn't have required so, so many ladders. We ended up using two ladders. Uh, we probably could have used three and had one person passing the roll over top and then managing to get to the other side to wrap it underneath. And we kind of proceeded to keep doing that until we made the roof watertight. The other thing we had problems with was the gable ends. It's actually very difficult to wrap pallet wrap onto a triangle shape because what was occurring was the plastic wrap was tending to roll itself over and not stick and then we'd, we'd make a, an entire loop from one side to the other but we wouldn't actually cover much ground. Once we had the roof structure pretty much in place it was it was a matter of wrapping the walls. The walls were actually pretty simple because we could go around all four trees and uh, make the structure that way and then we weren't too worried about having the plastic wrap touch the, grab, touch the ground because we were adding pine needles to kind of fill in the gap at the lower end. But overall, once the cabin was built, it turned out to be pretty watertight because of the way we did the wrapping from the bottom of the roof up to the peak of the roof. And then it was a matter of just filling in any holes that we missed with another extra wrap. So the good thing with pallet wrap is that you can kind of add more where you want to add more to fill in some holes. In hindsight, had we made panels for the roof and then screwed them together with either some screws or actually tied the panels together, we could have created the roof as a separate structure and then laid it on top. But that in and itself is a little bit more of a monster, probably would have taken closer to half a day as opposed to a half an hour. So the way we did it is a great method in order to create a large shelter in a very short amount of time. All right, we got the pretty much the whole thing wrapped and we didn't quite meet our 10 minute target. We're in and around uh, 30 minutes stock pallet wrap. Had, had the frayed edges. So if you keep your, uh, your edges are banged up like that, they, uh, it tends to rip and tear and it gets stuck. Truly in an emergency situation, you'd probably make a little more squat so you wouldn't need a ladder. That ate up a lot of time going up and down the ladder kind of continuously. And then obviously when we're wrapping it, um, that takes a lot of time. The other thing is, is that pallet wrap is notoriously sticky. So what's happening is it's sticking to itself. So we're fighting it pretty much the entire time. And then you're doing a lot of overhead work. So if you're not kind of, you know, versed with having your hands above your head for so freaking long, you, you get tired and uh, winded. Maybe I'm a little out of shape. Maybe we're all out of shape. Maybe winter, the winter took it out of us a little bit. So we got, uh, I'm pretty pleased with it so far. We've got pretty much the, all of the walls up, all the roof. We've got a couple of holes in the, uh, in the roof that we've got to patch up. And uh, just this over here, we, our sticks are a little long, so we have to cut those off and uh, kind of fill that in to give us enough, a little bit of overhang. What's really cool about that area here is we've got wood storage on both sides to keep it out of the, uh, out of the immediate rain. So when we want wood, we can have it kind of really close. So uh, what do you think, Chris? What do you think? Compared to natural materials, you can't beat plastics. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, the plastic wrap stuff, whatever. The, you should, before the end of this video, you should take a visit down to the other plastic wrap cabin that we did. It is a, it is long standing. It is still extremely useful. I camped out at it last year. It was super dry, super, 
uh, weatherproof and long lasting. I think that's the most important part. Like I made lots of natural structures in my life and if I come back to them after a year, they're gone, which is a good thing and a bad thing because then you got to rebuild it. So if you're looking for something with permanence in an emergency, having a couple of these stored back, uh, you know, for the apocalypse would not be a bad idea. So if you, you can carry one of these, two of these around and you can pop up a shelter like this in an emergency, it's gonna be pretty sweet. And you still got some stuff left. You haven't talked about it, it's true. wood stove. We got some doors to put in. We got bedding to make. We got a whole variety of other things to do with the plastic wrap. That's right. So if we're doing a tally on, on how much plastic wrap, now we did start with two and a half rolls. Um, we still have a whole roll left. Well, we got, we got, no, we, we have two, we have a whole, well, there's another roll over there. Yeah, so we have at least one roll. In, in reality, we probably use maybe one roll of wrap so far. Yeah, one roll. One and roll. We need a whole structure to fit 10 people in emergency. Yeah. So in 20, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, <laughs> roughly. Depends how it's edited. <laughs> I'll edit it true. Well, we, I can't do real time. Nobody's going to sit down and watch us for a half an hour going. Uh, that, that's a little uh, hard on the ears. I want to listen to that. That's probably, it's probably sounds like dubstep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so we've got uh, I've plus got, the camera died too. That's right. Well, it only it, runs for thirty minutes. It only runs for twenty nine minutes, uh, <laughs> and then it starts off. So you'll have to see the overhead camera will have cut out uh, before we got the walls done. But uh, stick around, lots left. It, yeah, stick around. There's lots left. We're gonna uh, we're gonna fashion a door, and uh, we're gonna start making some uh, some amenities inside. Uh, we gotta make a bed. So yeah, let's uh, let's carry on. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes with members from 150 different countries who come together to find inspiration and take their next step in their creative journey. It's a place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is a perfect place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. The best of all, Skillshare is ad-free, so you can stay in the zone while you're learning new skills. New premium classes launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. What else is neat about Skillshare is the entire catalog is now available in French, Spanish, Portuguese, and German. The reason why I find Skillshare such a valuable resource is because it's all the information is right there. Whether you're learning something new, or if you need a refresher course on something you thought you knew, or simply forgot. It's all there. I'm currently taking a course by Kat Cucolette and it's learn Adobe Photoshop fundamentals for getting started. And it's, uh, it's, it's a whole course on, uh, on the fundamentals of Photoshop. So you're either isolating a background, you're adding text, you're working with layers, you know, the stuff that you kind of sometimes need a little bit of help with. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box or to use my code will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So in order to cover up the bottom half of the wall, we ended up using all the pine needles that are laying around and we're mounting them up and uh, creating a good seal between the plastic wrap and the ground. So it's always about using available material that you have on site in order to create what you need. So this stuff is, uh, it's, it's primarily pine needles, but there is a little bit of dirt. So we're gonna try to get that heavy, thick stuff that's got a little bit of moisture to it. Cause uh, I am a little concerned about flammability, but uh, I think it'll, uh, it'll work out okay. I made myself a nice little overhang on the cabin in order to actually store all my wood here out of the rain. So I just cut my boards off to length and then I rewrapped it. So I've got a nice little water sheet off of it and drip not on my wood to keep it all dry. Give you guys a little bit of a pond update because uh, well last time we were here we uh, we put fish in the pond so uh, Don's gonna give some food. You can actually you can see them out there. They just can't be circling. They're just below the water. The water actually quality seems to be really good today. It's very nice and clear so come on throw it in there Don. Oh my look at that. Oh, they come closer.
So there's a couple of people that were concerned on how we put the fish in the pond. We should have, you know, brought them down ever so gently, eased them into the pond. Well, when we did that, what was occurring was the fish were kind of sinking to the bottom and rolling over. So we kind of, by throwing them into the pond, we were kind of like waking them up in order to kind of, you know, struggle for life essentially to actually, you know, thrive. So uh, the statistics on, on survivability, we ended up, there was one that wasn't doing so well about a week later and Chris ate them. So, um, you know, we got like a 99.9% .9 survival rate. I haven't seen any other fish, you know, belly up, no, no white fish or like, you know, bellies sitting up. So I think, uh, you know, they're doing well. They seem to be really enjoying their food. Every time we feed them, you can probably give them some more, Don. We, uh, we just fed them a cup of food. So every time we're, we're down here, we give them a, pretty much a cup of food. I guess the other concern was that, uh, why didn't you just put them in a bucket and walk them down? Well, as it turns out, they don't fit in a bucket and that would have stressed them out even more because they would have been kind of sitting upside down in a bucket or like, you know, just right straight up because our bucket wasn't big enough. Like a five gallon pail, these things are 16 inch fish. They're not going to fit end to end. They're going to stress them out even more. So we were told, uh, basically to, you know, scoop up in a net, run them down to the pond and dump them in. So that's what we did. And, uh, they seem to be doing really good. So everything, everything all is well that ends well. They're still hungry. Look at <laughs> this, this second, uh, second cup of food. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to keep feeding our fish. There's our fish update. Our fish tails. All right, pretty, pretty much have it all air sealed now. All we need is a door. As you can see, we have our overhang over here that gives us nice storage on this side. And we've got it pretty much, uh, pretty much weather tight now. So now we gotta do is install a door. I've got a uh, solution for that. All right, we've got a little bit of a situation. Can't get in or out. <laughs> <laughs> My brother's, he, he's in. How did you get in? You can make a chicken pen out of this. I don't think they'd figured out how to get out. Oh, uh, they'd peck, they'd peck holes in, in this thing. No problem. So this is what I was talking about. This is the zip wall system. It's really cool. I, I don't even know why I'm talking about it so much, but it's really neat. I've, I've been saving these for literally years. I actually, there was a guy doing some work and I said, those are really cool. And he gave me a box and I've had them for li like 10 years. And uh, so that's, that's this. So what they do, that they say to do is take this thing and un unroll it and it's got double-sided uh it's got tape on both sides all right we got one small tear here not a big deal we just open it up like this it's like having ourselves a tent we're not gonna go much higher than that but uh yeah i think uh kevin's gonna get started on a bed so i'm gonna start on the uh a camp stove from the russian bear tent that uh, i think was in a previous video with uh chris and kevin so we'll just take this in and Take it apart, there, get it uh, set up. Wow, it comes with everything. Okay, hopefully we can, uh, we have enough chimney pipe to get out through the roof. So we're gonna put it at the, uh, a bit of slope here. Ah. Lots of clearance on the outside. So this is part of the Russian bear kit I uh, got a while back. I tested it on my channel uh, with a beardsman. So basically it's uh, just a little, little tiny stove. And we can just feed in through there. And uh, there's heat shields on here, so it should be okay. But Kevin will advise on that. But he's busy making his bed. So, and I think we're gonna need some up top too, otherwise that plastic's gonna melt. Just figuring the length of my bed, I figured this end wall is about, uh, it's actually about seven and a half feet. So I'm gonna make my bed probably six and a half feet. That'll give me enough uh, room on either side to put maybe a nightstand or something to put, you know, my stuff on. So that's, uh, that's my plan there. I'm gonna cut the, the side pieces six and a half feet. We got no screws. We got power wrap. Alright, let's see what we can do. The idea behind this, these beds is that it's scalable. So you can add 
one, two, three, four, five, all up to 10 beds. If you can cram them in the cabin, you can sleep people on them. So these are about two feet wide by about six feet long. These are the legs. So we're gonna put the legs inside. We need to make it a little bit wider because the bed is a little bit wider this way. So we're moving the stumps in order to accommodate the width of our bed because we want the post to sit directly underneath the edges of the bed. Because our ground is not perfectly level, we're going to slope it uphill so when you're sleeping, your head's on the high side because otherwise all the blood rushes to your head. That's comfy. This thing is gonna fall. <laughs> Maybe we could wrap this a little bit more. I think we need a little bit more strength. Although it feels like a hammock. It feels like it's, I'm, I'm kind of sunk right into it. It's actually quite comfy. I don't know. I think it's gonna stretch back unless it, it well, is it earthquake proof? <laughs> I think it's pretty darn good. Feel like you're gonna fall through yet? No, I don't actually. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the womb. <laughs> yeah, like, it doesn't. Pretty, I don't. I don't feel scared at all on this thing. Pretty solid. It is. Like, it's gonna conform to your body. It is. I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna be like a little piece of leftover sandwich or something. I think people pay good money for that. That's right. Exfoliate. Yeah. Or you get the, the wrap or something like that. Yeah, you get wrapped and then you get unwrapped. I don't know what parties you hang out at. <laughs> <laughs> I think post-apocalyptic Earth, if you had yourself a saran wrap or a plastic wrap bed to lay your head down at the end of the day, you'd be like, you know what? I'm living the life. Even if it's not post-apocalyptic, this is really comfortable. It's actually like I fit... I fit perfect in it it's got like it feels like it has lumbar support and everything I'm, I'm, it's like conformed to my body which is really cool is when you look up you can actually still see the trees and you can see the blue sky and you can see the sunshine coming in this is like this is nice it's like afternoon nap sort of time but we got more stuff to build so let's start building it so we're just going to clear out all the debris that's on the ground in order to prevent our fire from spreading. And then we've got some rocks and uh, that'll give us a nice area so we can cook on in the future. So then we're gonna use some nearby granite rocks. We got to line the perimeter of our fire pit so our fire doesn't get away on us. We're going to use this old piece of aluminum. We're going to cut a hole through it and allow our chimney to slide up through there. And we're going to cut the plastic away from the chimney pipe in order for it to not melt when we light a fire. Now I'm going to cut the plastic out in order to get the pipe through the hole. I'm going to cut it from the inside because it's easier that way. And then slide the pipe up through the hole just like that. All right, so we got the stove installed. We've got our heat shield installed here. We've got our plastic tucked away from the heat pipe. And uh, if you guys don't already know this, this is the Russian bear tent stove. It's a completely stainless steel stove. It is designed for a tent. So basically in the middle of a combustible tent, this thing is designed for it because it's got the heat shields on it. So you can space the heat shields up with these little set screws and it allows it to actually be really close to combustible. So the, the idea behind this guy is you open that lid, you put your fuel in there, everything's stainless steel, this thing won't rust. There's somebody screaming in the comments right now that the floor is not, you know, non-combustible. So what I'm gonna do is I've got another piece of aluminum and I'm gonna slide it underneath the stove. And this is gonna prevent any kind of embers that are falling out of the stove onto the forest floor. This forest is a little bit of a tinder bundle, so anytime we can kind of clean up any of the deadfall or the dead 
branches laying around. It's going to help this forest immensely. This forest is, uh, it's long overdue for being thinned out. So anytime we have the opportunity to take sticks off of the ground and burn them for fuel or campfires or whatnot, it's going to help this forest out. As you guys can see behind me, this is a, this is a planted forest. There, it's all in rows and it needs to be thinned out. So we're kind of doing that as we go. Anytime we have the opportunity, that's what we do. So we're never short kindling. The whole forest is kindling. Well, it is all kindling, but it surprisingly hasn't burned down yet. Look how dry this stuff is. It's very, it's popcorn fart dry. <laughs> It broke on its own. It did break. You could probably light that with a match. Well, you'd have to light that with a match or a lighter. How does that work? All right, guys, I'm just gonna give you a little quick tour of the other plastic wrap cabin. Now this cabin is about 10 minutes away by, by footpath from the other cabin. And uh, this thing is nearly two years old. It's gone through two winters and uh, this will be the second summer it's gone through. So let's, uh, let's give it a little bit of a tour. So as you guys can see, it's, it's still fully intact. It hasn't, at least have come to the elements. It's uh, still very solid. It hasn't degraded. The UV hasn't taken its toll on the plastic. So, uh, you know, this is pretty, this is a pretty permanent cabin for such a temporary material. I think it's holding up quite well. As you can see, it's very dry in here. You've got a uh, very nice place to stay. If you had to stay somewhere, everything is like, it's none of the water's coming in. None of it's, uh, none of it's gotten wet. So as you guys can see, this cabin seems to have fared really well. As you can see the roof still fully much intact. There was uh, there was concerns about the condensation and whatnot forming in between the panels, but uh, it doesn't seem to be the case. So yeah, still holding up really, really well. My brother uses this for turkey hunting and uh, deer hunting in the fall. So uh, yeah, so this is a great little shelter for him to kind of get away from it all and kind of camp overnight if he if he needs to or if he wants to. But yeah, this thing holding up great. So what that does is it holds my grill and allows me to adjust it. You probably stand on this thing, really. Adjustable up and down, and then we take it off. We light our fire, and then when we're ready to cook, we just set the grill down on our coal bed, and we can cook. That one's hot. All right, so we got hot dogs. Hot dogs, that's a that's a good looking hot dog. Can you guys see that hot dog? We just got our coffee sitting there, just ready to boil. We got our French press, so that'll be sort of a, a little bit later on sort of thing, so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go mustard, mustard just only. Mustard just only, mustard okay. only for my hot dog. Is it lava? Mm -hmm. It's hot, it's hot, it's hot dog. That's why I didn't bite into it. <laughs> Just fresh off the grill. If you guys uh, want to check those guys out, mm-usa.com, they sell those grills. They're stainless steel. They're amazing. We've been using them for many years now. But uh, yeah, they make a they make a great hot dog. It's real lava. Careful. It's hot dog. Here you go, Don. Thank you. Careful, it's hot. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Got it? Hot? Hot, hot. Careful, it's hot, Don. There we go. I'm under control. Ah, afternoon forest coffee. It was a little bit after lunch, but that's okay too. Took a little while for the water to boil. I was thinking actually the, the little kettle we were using was going to catch fire as it has a wooden handle, but it uh, it did not. So, success. Success on the coffee. Is it lava? It is. <laughs> Too bad I don't have a table to work at yet. Well, 
that's going to change. We're going to build a table right now. So these are my four posts that I'm going to use for my table. So these are my egg, my outsides, and then my inside. So that's going to be the size of my table. All right, so we got our basic frame of our table done. This is surprisingly, surprisingly durable. It seems like it's withstand an earthquake. That should be good. Now, the only thing we have left to do is give us kind of a tabletop surface. How's that for a table? We got a pretty good table. All we're gonna do is get some legs on this thing and it'll hold up pretty much. Anything we're gonna put on it. It's a good thing she fits through the door. So there's our table. Doubles as a drum. Look how, there we go. Nice surface. I like think if you keep your stuff near the edges, it'll hold it no problem. It's pretty much entirely made of pallet wrap. It's got some cedar posts and some logs. We ended up uh, kind of weaving the edge, like uh, I guess it's called sinew or something like that. It's kind of the same idea, but it's instead it's plastic wrap. So you just kind of keep wrapping it and it gives a nice, I think it's pretty solid. I don't know. Think I can, do you think I could sit on it? Well, maybe. I, I'm gonna say no, can't sit on this table, but I'm sure it'll work. This is nice. We've got our plastic wrap cabin. It took us a little longer than we anticipated. I think we built it in about 30 minutes. Uh, a little far off of our little 10 minute goal. And it, and at the end of the day, it's probably not gonna hold 10 people, but if we had 10 guys building it, we probably could have had it done in 10 minutes and had it fit 10 guys. The thing is, is with scale, it's always kind of easier to go bigger. You still need two, you know, you still need a roof, you still need four walls, regardless of the size of it. It's just it gets it's just bigger when you when you have larger trees. So this is definitely a viable solution if you need a cabin in a heck of a hurry. So the plastic wrap cabin is definitely a solution to that. So let's give you a tour of the inside. So we've got ourselves a nice little zipper door here that allows us to open and close. If we want to stay out of the elements, we just come on in, we close the zipper. And then when we're in the inside, it's kind of like we're on the outside, but we're sheltered from the wind, we're sheltered from the rain, and uh, we've got pretty much the amenities that we, we need. We need a place to lay our heads at night. We need a place to work or cook or you know prepare our meals. We also have a heating source, which is this little wood-fired camping stove. It's the uh, Russian bear tent stove. So this guy, little guy here is made completely out of stainless steel. It's got little viewing windows on the sides and uh, that's the business end of it. You load your firewood in, in here and uh, away you go. It's a little warm today. So we're not gonna actually fire that guy up just yet, but it's got the uh, stainless steel chimney and it's got the right size chimney. If you look at the size of it, it's like a three inch diameter chimney pipe. It goes up through a piece of flashing in the roof and uh, it prevents the plastic from melting. Well, Don had to go home and uh, my brother had some other stuff he had to do today. So we left earlier today. So I just, uh, I got an early start tomorrow morning. So I figured I'm just gonna take advantage of the unseasonably warm weather to just kind of, you know, hang out in the bush and, and enjoy my new creation. This is really like the way it's turned out. I, uh, it's like low of 20 degrees Celsius, which is, is quite, it's quite an agreeable temperature for, tent camping, especially this sort of thing. I don't even think I need to light an indoor fire. Um, I've just got the little campfire going now. I think what's especially neat about these plastic wrap cabins is how they refract light. You just get like one little flashlight and uh, you shine it at the ceiling and it kind of lights up the whole area. It's kind of like a just magnifies the light. So I've got uh, just, just, one, just one little flashlight going on here and uh, yeah, it seems to work really well. But anyways, I'm, I think I'm pretty much pooped. I'm, I'm done for the day. Um, you guys want to see, uh, you know, how this turns out, uh, subscribe to my channel. I don't think I've asked you guys to subscribe. It's been, it's been about two years now. <laughs> so if you guys have been holding out, waiting for something, I don't know. Now's a good time to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Maybe I'll ask you in another two years. Anyways, have a good night.